hey, I want to know from you, how many streams of income do you have? Tell me down in the comments. We're talking about that and more in this week's episode. Stay tuned. Hey everybody, thank you for joining me for another episode of Entrepreneur Insider. I am Tia Robertson, the host and the founder of the Black Entrepreneurs Network. In this episode, we're talking multiple streams of income. So did you tell me down below in the comments how many streams of income you have? If you didn't, that's okay, it's not too late. Go ahead and put it down there now. I'd love to read how many streams of income you have, what they are, and you know, how long you've been doing them. So anything you want to share, be sure to put it down in the notes. All right. So here's the thing. Multiple streams of income is one of the easiest terms to define. You don't have to be an entrepreneur or a business owner to have multiple streams, and they can be active or packed passive streams. Here's the thing. Most people think of a stream of income like a job or a business, and those are streams of income. But there are things that you can do in addition. So when you hear people get a second job, that's an additional stream of income. And when you think of people doing things like developing a course or a digital product, that's another stream of income. Ideally, what a lot of people don't realize is that you want your streams of income to be passive, right? You don't want to be doing the five or seven, as they recommend, <laughs> number of streams of income that everyone should have. You don't want to be active and running around doing things in each of those every single day. Now, in some of your streams of income, it's okay if you have a team or a partner that manage or operate them for you while you do oversight and other streams of income, it's okay if you're hands-on and involved. But simply put, a stream of income is what brings cash flow into you or better yet, into your bank account on a regular basis. So that can include everything like we talked about, a job, a business, a digital product. Here's another thing. Some people donate plasma, some people, are egg donors, right? <laughs> um, some people are laboratory participants. Um, there's a lot of ways to build a stream of income. And of course, from those examples that I just shared, the income that you receive will come on different intervals. They don't have to always come every day, every week, every month. Maybe it comes, you know, every six months, right? Um, so, the thing is really to open your mind, ideally to become a wealthy person, not necessarily a rich person, and we'll make that distinction in a different episode, but if you have any questions, just reach out to me. To become a wealthy person, you need to have more than one stream of income, or as I mentioned earlier, the recommendation is seven streams of income. So kind of think of Jeff Bezos or Damon um, Dash, even though I meant Damon John. <laughs> um, Diddy is a perfect example, right? There's a lot of people of color as well as not of not of color, and the way that they become wealthy is by having multiple streams of income. Rihanna is a perfect example. Now, does it mean they didn't get rich off that first stream? So let's use Rihanna, right? She became, she's a, a musician um, and she gained wealth as a musician, right? But then she also became um, an actress. She has a beauty line. She has a lingerie line. All of those things are multiple streams of income. And again, she has a team to help her manage them. But once you put these things in place, it helps just build your empire. It helps build your foundation and makes it more stable. So hopefully you get the idea of what multiple streams of income is. Now, what does that mean for the rest of us? Does it mean we have to be famous before we start? No. Does it mean that we have to be like, oh my God, I need a second job to pay off this thing? No. Like you are the person that determines how many streams of income you have, why you have them, what works best for you, your brand, your family. If you have any questions about ideas for developing a multiple stream of income, 
how to implement things that you have in mind, just let me know and I'm happy to help you now or put you in contact with the resources that can help you. All right, so this video is just intended to open the, your mind, set the stage to that multiple streams of income is really a thing. It's not just a cliche that people talk about and let you know that it is realistic. But the other thing I want you to really start thinking about is that multiple streams of income will gain wealth. And one of the best ways and kind of simple ways, I don't want to make it seem like it's super easy because there are some facets to it depending on you and your business and what you're trying to do. But one of the most powerful ways to develop income, especially passive income, is through having a digital product. Now, let me just define really quick active versus passive. So you know how you read those posts and people are like, hey, I woke up and I had a million dollars in my bank account. That was passive. It means they did something one time and the income based upon their income generating activities, like whether they placed an ad or whether they became an affiliate for someone else, you get the idea. Those things generated income while they slept. So they didn't have to go out and work in order to get a paycheck. You know, active means, hey, I have a job. I have to get up and go nine to five every day, whether it's remote or not. <laughs> you actually have to go and do something in order to generate a check. If you have a second job at McDonald's, right? You actually have to go to McDonald's in order to generate that check. If you are um, a plasma donor, then you actually have to go and donate plasma to generate that income, right? You're a babysitter, you get it? Whereas passive, which is ideal, is you create something usually one time and it works on your behalf as long as you're meeting the need of the people that need that product or that service. Usually it's a product. All right, so this example that I want to talk to you more about, <coughs> excuse me, is digital products. You've all seen them. Some of you may have them. If so, I applaud you. But a digital product is like an ebook. It's a course. It's a membership program. It's um, maybe, excuse me, um, you create some templates, right, that help people with their social media designs. There are a lot of great ideas about digital products and I'm learning more and more about them every day. But the reason why I'm bringing them to you is because one, I wanna introduce you to a resource that can help you develop them and build your business, right? Make things less hectic for you and reduce the struggle. But I really, really, really want my listeners and our communities of color to stop struggling as much. If you want to work, great. If you want to have a job, that's great. If you want to build a team, that's great. If you want to start a franchise, that's great. But there are some other ways that can help you build your bank account that don't require so much of a struggle. Now, you do have to know what you want to talk about and make sure it meets the needs. So you just don't want to wake up and say, hey, I'm doing an ebook on the power of McDonald's today, right? Now, if someone wants to read that and you've done research and you've Googled, you know, uh, um, trends or, you know, you looked at hashtag and you know that there is, there is a, a niche for people that want to know about McDonald's. If you can reach them, that's great. But as with everything, I just want to stress that it's really important to not only have your idea, but make sure that it makes sense that there's a need for it because I'd hate for you to dedicate your time and your energy to developing this thing and it just sits there or you launch it to crickets. So make sure that you actually put a plan into place to say, this is what my thing is. This is the results that I want it to achieve and also set some goals for yourself, right? When it starts achieving those things or when you actually, here's a goal. I want to launch it this, this time. I want to have this type of results by this date. I want to edit it a year from now. You know, those are just kind of some examples. But I really just kind of want to stress to all of you, and hopefully you'll share it with the people you know. It's really important to have a plan, set some goals, and be succinct. Remember, specific is terrific. It's not just a saying, but it's very much true and will help you reach your targets. Okay, so... 
In today's episode, I want to introduce you to a professional development speaker and an amazing resource within the Black Entrepreneurs Network community. Now, for those of you that have been attending our events, I applaud you. High five. Thank you for coming. Continue to share people. For those of you that have not come, mark your calendars and come out to our events because it's an amazing way to meet our growing community of engaged and intelligent entrepreneurs, people of color. Some of them aren't entrepreneurs. Some of them are students, but most of them aren't. But in our community, it is vital that we keep growing. And by community, I don't necessarily just mean the Black entrepreneurs community. I mean communities of color, period. United States, all over this world, globally. It is important that we don't just do our thing and sit back and say, yep, that's what I do. It's important that we keep growing and we keep learning and we keep connecting with other people and expanding our mind. It helps not only to keep your business from being stagnant, right, and get you more customers, but it actually expands your community, gives you other things to think about, and of course, helps you make some connections. So, in the Black Entrepreneurs Network community, we have professional development speakers that come in. There are people from outside that are experts in what they do. And not just that they say they're experts, they have a proven track history of generating, whether it's income, results, whatever is specific to their industry. And so we want to learn from them. Why we create the wheel if we don't have to? Well, Recently, Lakeisha Sarba, the owner of Savvy Simple Marketing and Savvy Simple Funnels, someone who has developed funnels for other professionals, $1,000 funnels and more, recently graced us with her presence in the first of three series about digital products. So I'm not going to reveal the whole training to you because again, that is a privilege of the people that are part of our community. And of course, the people that showed up to our networking events. But I do want to introduce what a digital product is to you by showing you this recording of a recent event. She's going to talk about what a digital product is, how it can be developed, and the importance of what it could mean to your business and bank portfolio. So stay tuned. All of Lakeisha's information is down below in the show notes. And let me know, do you have a digital product? If you want to develop one, but not sure where to go, post those comments in the down below as well. <laughs> Definitely want to hear all of it and more and get you on the path to obtaining and sustaining wealth. What are digital products and are they right for your business? But first, let's talk about what a digital product is. So a digital product is pretty much anything that is intangible, something that people have to access either online or something that they can download. So it's not something that we're mailing people. So it's not like a physical product, right? It's kind of like a non-physical product. It's digital. Okay. And again, people will need to access it via the online web, or it would have to be, um, have to be downloaded. Okay. And, um, so that's what a digital product is. Um, so a course is a digital product. Okay. So how many people have enrolled in courses? Let's try that. Hands up. If you've enrolled in courses. Awesome. Okay. Hands up. If you've enrolled in memberships, are you involved enrolled in a membership? Okay. Um, hands up. If you have Netflix, Okay. <laughs> Hands up if you have Apple, like iMusic or any type of other music streaming platform, any music, like it doesn't matter, right? If you listen to music online, you have a membership. Okay. Those are all considered digital products. Okay. Um, it's just in different areas um, of like in different industries. Okay. Um, and the reason that I am such a big proponent of using digital products is because they literally change my life. I am a done for you service provider. Do you, do anyone, do you know what that means? A done for you service provider is someone that helps to do things. So I am building out online automated funnels, right? So those landing pages, sales pages, the email automation, doing the Facebook ads, I'm doing a lot of that for my clients, right? And so when I was doing that, that was more of a one-to-one -one model, right? So I know a few of you here are coaches, so you understand what I'm saying when I say one-to-one, -one, working with people one-on-one, -on -one. 
well, there's only so much that I can do. There's only so much business I can take on. There's only so many people that I can work with at one time. And I was exhausted trying to scale my business at the one-on-one model, right? Because there's only one me, no matter how many assistants I hire, only I can do what my clients are paying me to do. Sure, I can have you know some of my team members do some other stuff, but I am the one that really keeps this thing going. I'm the one that keeps the lights on. I'm the one that keeps the money coming in the door. That became really exhausting, right? How many of you have heard the word hustle, hustle, hustle? Hustle, hustle. You got to hustle. You got to hustle to be successful. You got to hustle. Well, ladies, you know, no, no slight to you gentlemen, but with us doing all that hustle, 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 hustle all the time, we are more so in the, like um, being more in masculine energy and not in the feminine energy that we need to really be in, to be in this online space, right? And we don't do it intentionally. What happens is we listen to people like Gary V and some other, you know, masculine people that are great. No, no, you know, I'm not slighting anybody, but that's not how we are meant to kind of do and show up. We can't do that hustle, 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 hustle all the time. It's just not, something that we are created to do. And so I was doing all the hustling, all the hustling and had very little time for my son. I have grandchildren, believe it or not, very little time for them, just working, 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 working. So this was about four years ago when I said, this has got to stop. Like I just cannot continue to do this or work at this pace in order to grow my business. So what I decided to do, I'm also what's considered a Canva certified creative. Anybody love Canva? You do your own Canva graphic designs. I know we got a real graphic designer in house and you probably don't use Canva. I get it. I know. I know. We do though, right? So we love Canva because it's so easy for us to be able to use it to create the designs. And so I said, you know what? I'm going to start creating some things and I'm going to start selling them because people are always asking me about my social media stuff. So I did that. I sold the template and it went really well. And I was like, wow, I sold something for $27, $37. And I had all these hundreds of people buying it. And I said, Nah, right. And this was four to five years ago. Let me remind you, this is where people were not doing what's considered a low cost digital product at that time. So I thought this is a fluke. And at the time I was working with a high, you know, a coach that was, I was paying her a lot of money to kind of coach me and help me. And she did help me get my business from one point to into another point. So I'll give her that. When I shared with her what I did, she was appalled, like really upset. No, you should not be doing that. That is your, you know, taking the value away from what you're doing. Um, that is not, you know, what you, what your business model is. You're done for you services. People should pay you 5,000, 10,000, $20,000 to do the work. Right. And so I was a bit taken aback. Like I'm thinking I'm doing something good. I've, you know, I made all this money and it was me just creating something one time. Right. So I kind of went back to the drawing board and I was like, you know what? that doesn't make sense to me, right? Nonetheless, this same coach is now offering these low cost digital products that I'm talking about. So nonetheless, long story short for me is that I was hustling, I was burnt out and I needed a way, right? God pretty much led me and directed me to do this thing that I'm already doing for myself to create this thing one time and sell it over and over and over again, but at a low cost. Back then it was unheard of because everything was high ticket, high ticket, high ticket, right? Um, But I did it anyway, and I stuck with it, and I started teaching other people how to do it. And it started changing people's lives because, yeah, you could be a high-ticket coach, or you could be selling a program or something else like that, or you could be doing something. But if you are trying to scale your business at that one-on-one model and you don't have like an agency or having like a team of people that's doing what you do, it, you're never, you're really not going to get there, right? And so that's where these digital products come from, okay? Because it, you can work with a one-to-many model, meaning you create something one time and then you can sell it thousands of time over and over and over again, okay? Um, now, another reason that I love digital products, did you know that the e-commerce industry is on slate to, for the first time ever here in the U.S., so I'm only giving you U.S. stats, $1 trillion. The e-commerce industry is worth $1 trillion. Now, it wasn't slated to reach that. So it's, you know, here, it's actually on track to meet it for 2022. It wasn't on track to do that. They had forecasted it out to 2024. Does somebody hear what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. We jumped two years ahead of time, right? Based on a lot of things happened, though. We had factors. We had COVID, 
right? So a lot of us had to figure out some other really creative ways to make money online, right? The the, um, e-learning industry is a part of e-commerce that boomed a lot, right? Not only in the small business sector, but also in the big business sector. I have a friend that's in corporate and she told me, she was like, you are way ahead of your time here. She said, because my company is bringing somebody in, paying them million, like a million, like not a million, but like a lot of money to come in and create our e-learning program online. They literally took their entire e-learning and onboarding for their new um, employees online, this huge company. And now that's how they onboard their employees. It's no more going, flying into corporate or going somewhere else. You do everything online. You do all of your onboarding. You do all of your training before you even enter the office, right? This is the new way of how business is going to be done. And so that's why I am very passionate about being a digital product motivator. Hey, what'd you think of this episode? Leave any questions that you may have or any feedback down below. I love reading what you have to say and responding to you. You are truly appreciated as my viewer. So thank you so much. Don't forget to like, follow, and share the Black Entrepreneurs Network on all social media outlets and show up for our networking events. Now, if you want more information about Lakeisha, Savvy Simple Marketing, or our upcoming digital product training on Thursday, August the 18th at 7 p.m. Eastern, be sure to check the show notes. Again, don't be selfish and share that information with your community. It will be appreciated by me, but definitely by them. Now, I'd love to hear your recommendations for future show topics, talk to you about being a potential feature and interviewing you about your business, or have you sponsor an upcoming episode so you can get more eyes on your business product service. For all of those things and more, be sure to email me at info at the Black Entrepreneurs Network dot com. I appreciate your support, just like I appreciate our partner, RETV. As you know, they are an amazing, unique streaming platform that streams positive and engaging educational content for people of color. Hey, everybody. So don't forget to like, subscribe, share them as well. You can subscribe to this channel on YouTube, go to their 24-hour streaming platform on their website, www.re-tv.net. And of course, they're on Roku. So download that app and start streaming those shows today. Again, don't forget to share. All right. As always, I appreciate you joining me for this episode. And so next time, don't forget, be great. Peace. TV news break. Each Thursday at 12 noon Eastern, we'll come to you with the latest news, trends, and more with a positive spin. We know there's a lot of positive news that doesn't get reported, 
but we want to give you the opportunity to share your story here on RETV. If you have a positive news story you want us to share, you can submit your story to news at re-tv.net. Don't forget to subscribe to the Relationship Entertainment Television YouTube channel. Download the new RETV Live app on your mobile device and follow Relationship Entertainment Television on your favorite social media platform. Don't forget, make sure you tune in to the RETV News Break each Thursday at 12 p.m. Eastern. Until then, be blessed and be great. is Demita Joe. Each Wednesday, you can find me here at 3 p.m. I'll be over here discussing different things that are going on and try to bring you a boost of positivity for your week because we all need this. We're going to share some feel-good stories. We might find a hometown hero. We may take a look at some trending topic and sometimes we might even find a lesson in a not so warm and fuzzy story if we can. I'm Demita Joe, and I'll see you guys on the next episode right here on What's Going On? Hey, it's your girl Tia Robertson. I'm the host of Entrepreneur Insider. Eastern for entrepreneurs and news that you need to know about. See you there.